Welcome to the City Council meeting. Roll call, please. Mr. Bozen? Here. Mr. Amos? Mr. Morrissey? Here. Mrs. Klein? Here. Mr. Foyce? Here. Mr. Greider? Here. And Mrs. Julian? Here. I would ask that you join me in a moment of prayer or silence with giving special consideration to our, our fellow council member and friend, Jerome Amos and his family. In the absence of our mayor, I would ask you to follow me as I lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag the of the United of America, States of America and to the republic, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one under, nation God, under God, God, indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. all. Thank you. <laughs> Madam Mayor Pro Tem. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to approve the agenda uh, as proposed and the minutes of September 28, 2020 regular session and the special sessions of September 30th and October 2nd, 2020 as proposed. Second. Discussion? Madam, Madam Chair. Yes, sir. I, I just wanted to call attention to something that I noticed um, earlier today, uh, and sorry I didn't talk to Kelly Falkley about this, but in the consent agenda, it is uh, uh, labeled 1A with 11 uh, subtopics, and then B, and it has two number ones, and I'm just questioning, should that not be one, two, uh, three, and four, rather than one, one, two, and three. Yep, that's, and so that it's is, a, uh, how it should be. We have been having some issues with our agenda software. It automatically pre-programs that numbering in. We don't have control over it, but. Oh. Yeah, sorry. It's one, one. We, Novas can't count, I guess. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, does that count as an amendment then, Ms. Falkley? I would say no. Okay. We will make that that change, though, and thank you for catching that, Mr. Morrissey. Okay. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? We have an approved agenda and minutes. Thank you. We have two proclamations this evening, but since I am not there to read them, Ms. Falkley will read them in my absence. All right. Our first proclamation tonight is for, uh, excuse me, National Night Out, October 6th, 2020. Proclamation of the City of Waterloo, Iowa. Whereas the National Association of Town Watch, NATW, sponsors a national community building campaign on October 6, 2020, entitled National Night Out, and whereas the National Night Out event provides opportunity for neighbors in Waterloo to join 38 million people in over 16,000 communities from all 50 states, U.S. territories, Canadian cities, and military bases worldwide, and whereas National Night Out is an annual community building campaign that promotes police community partnerships and neighborhood camaraderie to make our neighborhoods safer, better places to live. And whereas neighbors assist law enforcement throughout joint community building efforts and supporting National Night Out 2020. And whereas it is essential for all citizens of Waterloo to come together with law enforcement and work together to build a safer, better community. Now, therefore, I... Quinton Hart, Mayor of the City of Waterloo, Iowa, do hereby call upon all citizens of the City of Waterloo to join neighborhood associations and the National Association of Town Watch in supporting the 37th annual National Night Out on October 6, 2020. 
Thank you, Ms. Sockley. Is there anyone there to accept the proclamation? There is not. Is Felicia on Zoom? Is Felicia there? No? Chris doesn't see her on. Okay. Well, thanks to Felicia for organizing this through with the, the neighborhood associations. It's been fun in years past. The city council has traveled around visiting all the neighborhood associations as they celebrate this night. Uh, we're not doing it this year because of the virus. But that doesn't mean that we don't ask that everyone support this. It's a great event. So thank you to everyone that, that participates. We have another proclamation, Ms. Falkley. Yes, the second proclamation for tonight is for Fire Prevention Week. Proclamation of the City of Waterloo, Iowa. Whereas the City of Waterloo, Iowa is committed to ensuring the safety and security of all those living in and visiting Waterloo and Whereas fire is a serious public safety concern, both locally and nationally, and homes are the locations where people are at greatest risk from fire, and whereas cooking is the leading cause of home fires in Waterloo and the United States, and whereas two of every five home fires start in the kitchen with 31% of these fires resulting from unattended cooking, and whereas more than half of reported non-fatal home cooking fire injuries occurred when the victims tried to fight the fire themselves. And whereas children under five face a higher risk of non-fire burns associated with cooking than being burned in a cooking fire. Whereas Waterloo's residents should stay in the kitchen when frying food on the stovetop, keep three foot kid free zones around cooking areas and keep anything that can catch on fire away from stovetops. And whereas residents who have planned and practice a home fire escape plan are more prepared and will therefore be more likely to survive a fire. And whereas working smoke alarms cut the risk from dying in reported home fires in half. And whereas Waterloo's firefighters and are dedicated to reducing the occurrence of home fires and fire, or, excuse me, home fires and home fire injuries through prevention and protection education. And whereas Waterloo's residents are responsive to public education members and are able to take personal steps to increase their safety from fire and especially in their homes. And whereas the 2020 Fire Prevention Week theme, Serve Up Fire Safety in the Kitchen, effectively serves to remind us to stay alert and use caution when cooking to reduce the risk of kitchen fires. Now, therefore, I, Quinton Hart, Mayor of the City of Waterloo, do hereby proclaim October 4th through the 10th, 2020, as Fire Prevention Week. Thank you, Ms. Falkley. Chief Trelor, would you like to address this at all? Sure. Well, well done, Kelly, and uh, thanks to Mayor, Thank Mayor Pro Tem, and Council for the proclamation. It, certainly, 2020 is one for the records books, and... Waterloo Fire, as well as many other city departments, have been struggling with the challenges related to COVID and trying to keep all of us safe, including our employees and, and as well as the citizens of Waterloo. But this is the time for us to focus away from COVID a little bit and be vigilant in trying to reduce fires and fire-related hazards within the community. So as Mrs. Felkley indicated in the proclamation, cooking fires and specifically unattended cooking fires are the leading cause of fires within Waterloo. So it's certainly relevant with throughout the United States, but it is our number one fire uh, cause that we're seeing here in Waterloo. So as it indicated in the proclamation, we're not encouraging people to try to fight the fire within their kitchen. We're encouraging people to get out first, then call 911. That's the first thing. We'd also encourage people to stay in the kitchen, just like the proclamation indicated. If you're leaving the kitchen, this is what we hear from most people that have kitchen fires in the community is they, I just left the kitchen for a minute. I totally spaced it off. I come back, the, the entire kitchen's on fire. So we're asking people if they have to leave the kitchen, whether it's to attend to a child or grab the front doorbell, it's to set a timer. If you leave the kitchen, Set it on your phone. If you got an Alexa, say Alexa, set timer for a couple minutes. That's key. Now, there are some people that are going to choose to try to put the fire out. If they make that choice, we're giving them a little direction as in some hits. Turn the element off and put a lid on the pot or whatever's on fire and then get out. If they choose to do that, that's up to them, but it may help. 
There's other things that we're doing uh, this week. We generally have hundreds of kids come down to Fire Station One, and we always look forward to that. We're obviously not doing that in the pandemic right now, but we are doing some uh, school visits. We've worked with Waterloo Schools, so we've got that set up. We're going to target some of the younger kids and we're gonna have uh, engine companies come out. We'll do visits outside the school and we have some of those arranged. We're also partnering with KWWL. We're doing more morning segments. We're doing some live um, work with them. It's a little scary for us, but uh, we had one this morning and it went off pretty well. So we actually had a, a grease fire on top of a stove out at our, uh, our training center. So that went really well too. So we hope people uh, tune in to those things. One last thing is this time of year, we always honor one of our firefighters with Firefighter of the Year. So Mayor Hart, along with the Exchange Club, uh, we honored uh, firefighter Travis Eden, who's our medical officer on C shift. He's been named the Firefighter of the Year here at Waterloo Fire for 2020. So we sure like to thank the Exchange Club for their continued support of that program. Uh, with Firefighter of the Year as well as Waterloo Police Officer and, and Reserve Officer of the Year. So they're just a great partner. So I'll turn it back to you, Ms. Stewart. Hey, good job, Chief. Thank you. And congratulations to Firefighter Even. We appreciate all of your work and you should be proud of the honor and we're proud for you. So thank you very much. And thanks, Chief Trelor, and to all of the staff for all that you're doing to, to protect us. Um, I had a friend who got a whole new kitchen because of popping popcorn and leaving it unattended. So can definitely um, assure everyone that it does happen and it happens very quickly. So thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, it is now time for oral presentations, a chance for the public to come up and let us know what's on your mind, with your <clears throat> questions or comments. Mrs. Felkley, do we have anyone that has called in to be um, nobody responded has to? But and nobody sorry, in the what? audience wants to speak either. So nobody called and nobody in the audience? Correct. Okay. Any council members? Madam Chair. Yeah, Mr. Morrissey. Yeah, I just wanted to um, uh, say that today starts early voting. And I hope that each and every one of the people out listening exercises their right to vote, whether it's by mail-in ballot, whether it's by uh, early voting at one of the sites that are available. And I know for sure that the uh, Black Hawk County Courthouse second floor election office is available for early voting. Uh, this is a um, very important election. Uh, and I just encourage everybody to get out there, uh, do some early voting. If you're not going to, make sure November 3rd is your day to speak your piece. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Morrissey. Someone else, I think, was Mayor making Pro a Town. comment. Was Dave Boson. Oh, Mr. Boson. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, this weekend, I had the honor of attending a, a celebration of life for a, a retired firefighter, uh, Steve Cochran. And he passed away from cancer a few weeks ago, and they had a, a celebration this weekend. And the reason I bring it up is that Steve was my partner on the ambulance for a number of years. I rode uh, 331, him and I together. And 331 is the downtown ambulance. It's uh, it was, At the time, it was one of the busiest ambulances. And, and uh, 331 at that time was averaging about 10 calls a day and we worked about 100 shifts together a year and equates to about a thousand calls and, and during that time there's a bond between partners you, you develop that bond and you uh um, you see the worst in people you see the best in people you you see uh you deal with medical emergencies you deal with horrific traumatic injuries you 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 help bring life into this world you see a lot of death and it creates that bond and uh Men and women of Waterloo Fire Rescue are, are some of the are some of the minority in this in this country that experience that bond every day. And he was an incredible firefighter. He was even a better paramedic. He left this uh, the job with a disability because he had a back injury. He he suffered uh, a terrible accident at a fire. He was on the second floor of a building. The floor collapsed. 
He collapsed through the second floor, the first floor, and landed in the basement wedged between the furnace and water heater on his back, on his air tank. But he fought to come back to work. He uh, fought with that back injury. He, every, every time he would injure his back, he just worked to come back to work because of that bond. And uh, I'm a better person for knowing him and a better paramedic for working with him. Thank you. Pretty incredible story, Mr. Bolson. Sorry for your loss and for the loss of the family. So thank you for sharing that with us. Any other comments from council? Madam Chair? Yes, Mrs. Klein. Um, based on the email that we got today about the all-in grocers, I just wonder if Mr. Anderson is gonna be bringing a revised or amended uh, development agreement in the next week or two? Mr. Anderson? Noel Anderson, Community Planning Development Director. That is exactly what we've been working on, um, getting that specific date from uh, from Mr. Rodney Anderson um, for what to change the amendment to. So uh, it looks like they have a, a pretty good schedule now set forth and we'll be sending it to council very soon. Okay. Thank you. Other comments from council? Madam Chair Pro Tem. Yes, Mr. Greiner. Uh, not to add on to Mr. Anderson's plate, but I do know that I am very much looking forward to the work session on the crossroads area whenever that comes up as well. Mr. Definitely, we, yeah. definitely we'd like to move ahead with some, some ideas there. Um, the, uh, the representative of the ownership uh, that I was to talk with last week, uh, wife went into uh, labor and so he was called out of the office unexpectedly. So we're trying to reschedule um, the initial meeting with me and him to set up a, a more detailed plan to move forward with council. Okay, Mr. Greiner, I'm yeah. sure that's a excuse you would understand, right? right. Very much so. Okay, thank you. Other comments? If not, let me just add that our first session of the community-wide book read on the book, How to Become an Anti-Racist, was a huge success. We've had hundreds of people sign up to be participants, to be facilitators. Our panel last week was um, president of Wartburg, president of UNI, president of Hawkeye, chancellor of Allen College, um, superintendent of the Waterloo and Cedar Falls schools. It was an awesome panel discussion. And if you missed the first one, but still want to get involved, um, you can still sign up on our Facebook page. And the first panel discussion was recorded and will be played back um, on Facebook and on YouTube. So if it's not too late, you can still participate and I encourage everyone to do so. So if there are no other comments, Mr. Morrissey? Yeah, Madam Chair? Yes, sir. Yes, I'd like to make a motion to receive and file uh, the oral comments uh, as stated. Second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Morrissey. I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda. That's 1A1 through 1B3 uh, with A with 1A-1, uh, the bill's payment being in the amount of $1,096,565.83. Second. All in discussion? Mr. Uh, Ma or, Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Morrissey. Yes, I'd like to remove three items. Okay. They are 1-A-10, 1-A-11, and 1-B-2. What was the second one? 1B2. B 1B2. 1-A-10, one, 1-A-11, one yeah. and 1-B-2. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's all of the liquor licenses? No, 1-B-2 no, is the central property holdings request.
Okay, you changed that to three earlier, Mr. Morrissey. No, I did not make an amendment change it. As Kelly stated, it is what it is, and okay. that's the way it was numbered. Okay, okay. All right, um, on 1A10, um, who um, should address so that So Mrs. One? Jewin, what we'll need to do is yeah. vote on the consent agenda first, and then we can address those three um, items that Mr. Morrissey requested to pull off the consent agenda. Okay, thank you. Ms. You're welcome. Chocolate. Okay, so we have a motion on the consent agenda and a second. Roll call, please. Mr. Bozen? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Foyce? Yes. Mr. Greider? Yes. And Mrs. Jewin? Yes. Ma Madam now, Chair? Yes, Mr. Morrissey. I'd like to make a motion adopting resolution approving award of bid to Cahoy Pump Service Incorporated of Sumner, Iowa, in the amount of $238,000. $515, approving the contract bonds and certificate of insurance in conjunction with the fiscal year 2020. Final clarifier number three, dewatering wells project, contract number 1032, and authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute said document. Second. Okay, there's a and, second. And, and okay. Madam Chair, if I might, uh, well, no, okay, we'll just take this separately. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Are there comments? Uh, Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Moore. Uh, why I took this off, first of all, is because we can't discuss anything on the consent agenda unless we do take it off, which I think is sort of um, too bad uh, because it would be nice to be able to address those without having to go through this. But I understand that that's the process. That's why we need to go through it. But why I bring off uh, item number 10 and uh, also item number 11 is because of the amount of money that we're talking about that the taxpayers are using in funding this project. And we as a council should be, as we have in the past, um, be recognizing uh, over a quarter million dollars of taxpayer money being used for this so that not only council, but also the public can have a right to discuss this, question it, and uh, submit comments to the council, which they're not allowed to do unless we do remove it. So that is the reason why I asked for 1A10 and, quite frankly, 1A11, uh, even though we were, that's not included in this. Okay. Do you have comments then, Mr. Morrissey? Just that, that I think it needs to be brought up just in case there are comments from other council or there are comments from the public. Okay. Can, um, Mrs. There, Jewin, there, can I add something yeah. quick? Um, sure. So, and I, I understand what Mr. Morrissey is getting at with having some of these items on the consent agenda. However, I would like to put, point out that we've been awarding bids on the consent agenda, I, I believe since at least March, and that any member of the public, any council member ha is well within their right to pull these items off the consent agenda. Um, so, and I, the reason why we do have a consent agenda is, and multiple cities use them, is to help us get through more routine items expeditiously. So when we're awarding a bid, we've already gone through several steps of a process. We've set the date of the public hearing. We've preliminarily approved the plan specs, et cetera. It's been published in the paper. Um, we've got the plans out on the plan room that um, contractors throughout the state can access. And then that also goes on to the city website. Um, we have a bid opening. And then we hold a public hearing to essentially approve moving forward with what those plan specs say. And um, we read the bids. And then at this point in the process, um, a lot of opportunity has come and gone for council or the public to ask questions and raise issues with what um, possibly could be an issue with the project itself, with what a bidder could have proposed. In fact, the bid documents that every bidder proposes are actually on the city website. So anybody out there could go and take a look and has an opportunity to ask a question either to a council member, 
to the person providing the bid to the city engineer. Um, and at this point, we're kind of rounding out the um, steps that we would have to go through in order to award a project and get it going. So I think if there are concerns with dollar amounts, things like that, um, a lot of times council's taken the opportunity to ask those questions about the dollar amount that the bid came in at um, during the public hearing. And I, I think we've done a pretty good job of having that conversation and looking into those kind of things further. So I think if there are further questions, you know, Mr. Morrissey did the right thing to pull it off the consent agenda, but I would say maybe that to say that putting this on the consent agenda is um, preventing people from making comment, I think that's a little misleading. Yes. Well stated, Mrs. Buckley. And that applies to 10 and 11. There have been numerous opportunities on both of those for the public to have input, correct? Correct. Madam Chair. Mr. Morrison. Well, okay. I'm not trying to mislead anybody. In fact, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to say that even at the 11th hour, as we all well know, uh, changes can be made and <coughs> comments can be made. And all I'm saying is when in number 10, and if I may look at number 11, the total amount of dollars that are paid by taxpayers total over $635,000. That's not chump change. And I believe that these should be submitted for a final introspection, like other things have been done in the past for a final introspection and have resulted in changes being made. That's all I'm doing. It's not misleading. I believe in full <coughs> openness all the way till the final vote uh, on issues like this that are of importance when you're talking about dealing with uh, property tax dollars. Okay, thank you, Mr. Morrissey. Ms. Felkley, do we need to open this for public comment then since he's taken it off the agenda or um, off the consent agenda? It's, it's off the consent agenda right now. So if Mr. Morrissey has questions about the dollar amount of the award, about the project itself, or any member of the public has those kind of questions, you know, now is the time since it's been pulled off of the consent agenda. Yeah. I would say, though, okay. that a general discussion about whether or not we like the consent agenda is not necessarily germane because right now we're talking about awarding a bid to a contractor. I agree. So, Mr. Morrissey, do you have any comments on this project? I think I probably made my comments. Okay. Are there any comments from the public? If not, we have a motion and a second for number 10. Roll call, please. Um, actually, we just made a motion on number 10. Just to clarify. We that. already made a motion on number 10. Yep. So, Mr. Morrissey, on number 10. Yes. N Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Foyce? Yes. Mr. Greider? Yes. Mrs. Jewin? Yes. And Mr. Bozen? Yes. Okay, number Madam 11. Chair. Madam Chair, I make a motion uh, to adopt and approve a resolution awarding bid to Midwest Concrete Incorporated, Piazza, Iowa, in the amount of $398,757.05, approving the contract bonds and certificate of insurance in conjunction with fiscal year 2021 sidewalk repair assessment program, Zone 10, contract number 1018, and authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute said document. Okay. okay, is there a discussion? Madam Chair? Yes, Mr. Moore. My com comments, uh, I just want to make sure that I reiterate what I had said before and okay. ask if there's any public comment. I will ask for that, Mr. Morrissey. Are there any comments from the public? If not, we have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Foyce? Yes. Mr. Greider? Yes. Mrs. Jewin? Yes. Mr. Bozen? Yes. And Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Okay, thank you. Then Madam number Chair. two? Yes, Mr. Morrissey. I'd like to make a motion approving the request of Central Property Holdings, LLC, for an extension to repair sidewalks at 200 block 
uh, Franklin Street, uh, parenthesis PIN 8913-24-308-085, parenthesis uh, CN215, and 200 block of Walnut Street, parenthesis PIN 8913-23-431-010, parenthesis, parenthesis CN424. Is there second. a second? Okay. Comment. Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Morrissey. Yes, why I ask this to be removed is I have the question, do uh, any of the sidewalk portions in need of repair, uh, do they meet the criteria that we talked about in the work session where there's a resolution coming up that are only sunken or uneven and not fractured, broken, uh, or cracked. This is Jamie Knudsen. Do you want to address that, please? Uh, Jamie Knudsen, City Engineer. Um, to be honest with you, Mr. Morrissey, I can't answer that question. The sidewalk around this particular property has a clean walk notice, which means they must clean their sidewalks to get rid of all of the grass that is on it so that we can do a proper inspection. Um, my understanding is that the property owner is saying he'll have that done in the next uh, two weeks and then we can do a proper evaluation of that sidewalk. And at that point he would have a one, if council approves this, he'd have a one year deferral to make repairs and it's based on the fact that uh, he would be building a, or putting up a building in that location and doesn't want to repair the sidewalk and, and have it damaged uh, during construction. So it makes sense to go ahead and approve this to give him a year that hopefully the building is complete and then he can do all the sidewalk repairs at that time. Okay. Okay, so, Mr. Knudsen, so is this motion just to clean the sidewalk so that you can inspect it or is it for the delay because of the construction? It would be for the delay of the construction. It's just we don't we do not know what specifically what panels or pieces of sidewalk out there have to be repaired yet, but any, and I'm sure there are going to be some, but uh, any repairs that do need to be made, he's asking for a one year or an extension until October 1 of 2021 when his building should be complete. And then he can make those sidewalk repairs for all of the sidewalk around his property making the assumption that some of those will get damaged during construction. But we haven't inspected them yet. So this delay, as soon as he cleans up the sidewalk, we would at that time make the inspection to determine what panels needed to be replaced. Right. And then he would, and again, assuming council approves this tonight, then he would, once we do the inspection, he'd get a year, basically a year extension to make those repairs um, on whatever panels are needing repair at that at this time. Okay, thank you, Mr. Knudsen. Other comments or questions? Mayor Pro Tem. Yes, sir. So, Mr. Knudsen, how long are we giving him to clean up the sidewalk so we can determine uh, what needs to be repaired? Per our guidelines that we had sent out back in July, or actually back before then, contractors and our homeowners and property owners were to have made these repairs by now, um, or made these these repairs as far as the clean walks by now. Um, if council remembers when we had the sidewalk bid opening several weeks ago, there were a number of folks that showed up in chambers asking for extensions or information and most of those were at that time um, sidewalks that needed to be cleaned the property owners can still do that work to get them cleaned um, and save themselves i think the bid item right now for the contractor to do it is about fifty dollars um, per property so they can save a little bit of money and we still allow it we've allowed it in the past um, for property owners to do it, but uh, we like to have them done earlier so we can give the contractor a better idea of actually how much repair is going to be in there. But he, this particular location is not 
um, getting anything out of the usual or anything out of the ordinary that we're allowing um, several others for this year's zone or, and in the past zones to do. So, so Mr. Knutson, is this inside or outside the fence? This would be outside the fence. Okay. But he's had since like June to make, to make, to clean up that sidewalk. And now it's October 5th and it's still not done. Is that correct? Correct. Thank you. And Mr. Knudsen, is it my understanding that by passing this, we give him a little more time to clean it up. We make our assessment, but then he has extended time in order to repair, correct? Correct. He would have, if council approves, he'd have until October 1, 2020 for his letter um, that was attached to Novus. Thank you. Other questions? Madam yes, Chair. Not. Yes, sir. Yes, I, I just uh, want to add that I would ask that either uh, the mayor or uh, Mr. Knudsen give me, once that uh, cleanup has been done, the amount of squares or sections that are uneven or uh, out of compliance because they've sunken uh, and could be if we adopt a resolution for mud jacking, use that process rather than a total reconstruct. <coughs> Mr. Knudsen, are you acceptable to that? Yes, we can, all of the, all of the, uh, Sidewalk inspection forms for every property in the city or for every property in the zone are are on file with us in the city clerk's office. So that's public record. Um, when we get it done, we will certainly forward that on to Mr. Morrissey and the rest of the council so that they're aware. Thank you. Thank any you. Other, any other questions or comments? If not, we have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Mr. Voice. Yes. Mr. Greider. Yes. Mrs. Jewin? Yes. Mr. Bozen? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Would someone take the public hearing, please? Madam Chair. Mr. Morrissey? I'd like to make a motion to receive and file proof of publication of the public hearing on the reallocation of unspent proceeds of the general obligation bonds, series 2018B in an amount not to exceed 250000 Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. This is the time then for the public hearing for anyone that has comments on this project. Is there anyone in the audience? No one in the audience Elliot. wants to speak. No one? Nobody. Thank you. Okay. Any council members? Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Morrissey. I'd like to make a motion to close the hearing. Second. All in favor of closing the hearing, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Madam Chair. Mr. Morrissey. I'd like to make a motion adopting a resolution instituting proceedings to take additional action and approving the reallocation of certain unspent proceeds of the general obligation bonds, series 2018B of the City of Waterloo, Iowa. Second. Okay, roll call, please. Mr. Greider? Yes. Mrs. Jewin? Yes. Mr. Bozen? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Yes. And Mr. Foyce? Yes. Thank you. Resolutions, so somebody take three, four, and five, please. Madam Chair. Madam. Yes, Mrs. Klein. Number three is a resolution ordering the Waterloo Police Department to develop a new insignia and rescinding, the res and rescinding resolution number 2020-624. Number four is a resolution approving acceptance of a staffing for adequate fire and emergency response safer grant award in the amount of $1,010,772 to hire four additional firefighters and authorizing the fire chief to sign and accept the grant. Number five is a resolution approving the grade crossing surface repair fund force account agreement with the Iowa Department of Transportation, Chicago Central and Pacific Railroad in conjunction with the Burton Avenue Railroad crossing surface repair project 
with the city's share being 20% of the total project cost, which is to be determined and authorizing the mayor to execute said document. Second. Okay, yeah, terrific. Open this for comments, but let me first note on number three, um, the reason there is a change there is we've changed the number of people on the committee. We've added two student city council members. They will be non-voting ex officio members, but we wanted to get them on the record. And then we're adding two voting members um, to the committee. So if you have questions on that, uh, that's a reason for the, the change. Any other questions on three, four, or five? And we've got a member of the public that would like to speak. Yes, Forrest Dillavu, 1725 Huntington Road. I would like to speak to number three and number four. First, with number three, I was here when the amendment was made. It was my understanding that there was going to be consideration to keeping the insignia as was. It's already been explained that someone changed the numbers from eight, which was in the amendment and I was under the understanding that keeping the insignia was to be allowed to be considered. Uh, that's what I Mr. have on that. And Mr. Number Delavu, can I address that? May I address that, Mr. Delavu? It was never stated that consideration would be given to keep the insignia. The way it was written is that a revision of the current Griffin logo will be initially considered by the committee. So we're going to look at, is there another design for a Griffin? But the existing logo was um, individuals to determine how to change the police department's insignia. So maintaining it was never an option. And I, I don't really like the word ordering the police department what to do. I would like a copy of that amendment sent to my home by fax or some way. Okay, and number four, we are getting a grant of over a million dollars for these folks. Now at the end of this time, it's been the past, the city's practice in the past to keep those people. So how are we going to fund, fund those folks after the grant runs out. Are we going to raise taxes, raise fees? I think the citizens have a right to know before we take these people, how we are going to retain them, how we are going to pay them. We are the highest tax city in the state of Iowa. And uh, we our fees, you just keep adding fees and adding fees, increasing fees. And uh, and in some cases, we get nothing out of the fee increases other than a fee increase. I, I would like to have it explained to me where the money will come from to fund these people after the grant runs out. Thank you. Mr. Dillard, I'm gonna turn this over to Chief Trelaw in a second. But in the past, when we've gotten similar grants, part of the grant requirement was that we maintain the staff after the end of the grant. That is not the case with this grant. We do not have to keep them after the end of the grant. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to you, Chief Trelaw, let me, please. Let me respond to that if I could, please. Sure. I said in the past, we have never gotten rid of those folks. And I am sure that we will never get rid of these. Yes, it may not but say we have I to, meant, but Mr. we will. Thank you. Okay, but Mr. Dolvu, in the past, we had to keep them. That is not the case now. Okay, Mr. Knutson, I mean, please, Chief Trelor. Sure, I think, uh, well, we wouldn't bring these four new hires on with the expectation of uh, dropping our numbers back down at the end of the three years. This grant is for a three-year period. We've listed the expenses in the council communication. In the past, with the SAFER grant, we did uh, receive one a number of years ago, and that was to add one additional firefighter to bring us back to our numbers when we'd been cut the previous year. That individual is uh, still on the job today within our current staffing numbers. 
To answer Mr. Dilva's question, I'm not 100% sure how we pay for that uh, in the year 2023. I'm not sure anybody can necessarily comment, comment on that with any type of um, confidence. But I will say that our EMS revenue has been increasing year over year. We're having another excellent year. That might be an option. Or we have 20 retirements between now and the end of 2023 with six members eligible to go the year that the grant expires. So I would throw it out there that if the city council were to approve this grant and at the end of the three years, we simply couldn't afford the four that we brought on, we lose those positions through attrition. And then we have the benefit of having those four additional firefighters on during a once in a time, once in a lifetime pandemic. Other questions from the audience? If not, questions from the council? Madam Chair Pro Tem. Yes, Mr. Grant. Um, I just want to thank Chief Trelor and his staff that worked, uh, I know, very diligently on this grant. I want to applaud their effort because we got a, a very nice grant that is going to help us keep Station 6 open, um, which I don't know about some people, but is a big concern for my constituents. Um, they they rely on that station, uh, and these four new firefighters are going to help keep that station open, um, which is something that many of us have said is is um, a priority for us. So I want to thank Chief Trela. I want to thank his staff for doing this. Um, I'm very much looking forward to voting for this. This is really what we need right now because emergency services in a global pandemic are definitely a requirement, and this helps us get through this and then as Chief Treeler said, we can figure out a plan we have three years for this. Thank you. I agree, Mr. Grainer. Well stated. Any other comment? Madam Chair. Not. Yes, Mr. Morrissey? Yes, uh regarding item number three, the resolution on the insignia, um in looking at the uh, amendment, uh I, I believe that uh, my understanding is that there are now 16 people, if I counted correctly, on this committee. Correct. But, but only yeah, 12 it, only 12 voting members, Mr. Morrissey. Okay, but that's not how your resolution amendment reads. It reads that the mayor shall establish a small committee of not less than eight, not more than 12 individuals, to determine how to change the police department insignia. So we have 16 members who are actually going to have a voice in determining whether this, now whether they're voting members or not, does not make a difference as far as the number of people on the committee to determine what it's going to be. Voting go versus people on the committee are two different things. So I have a suggestion just to clear that up, and that would be changing that language to read just very simply that the mayor shall establish a committee of individuals to determine how to change the police department insignia. That way, you take the numbers out, the mayor's already established the committee, uh, they're set up, and then you explain furthermore in number one, uh, who those U City Council members are, as well as who the council members are. That's what that way I believe is clearer to the public about how many people are actually sitting down and discussing this in a committee to determine that whether they're voting or not voting. Madam, so Chair. you're saying, yeah, go ahead, Ms. Falk, or Ms. Klein. I'm a little alarmed at taking the numbers out, but I am curious as to why the numbers were increased when I remember vividly that night, it was said that smaller committees are more effective and just end up doing a better job of it and that it was going to be kept between eight and 10. Is there a, can I understand the mindset that increased it to 16? Well, eight to 10 did not include the non-voting ex officio. So even initially it was 12 people, just only 10 voting. Um, 
we felt strongly, uh, especially the mayor, that we should, this would be a great opportunity for the Waterloo Student Council members to, to observe and participate again with not voting. So we added the two city council, student city council members. And then the two voting members were added just um, partially my fault. Uh, the two co-chairs um, thought they each had five because they saw the eight to 10 and they forgot to factor themselves in and I forgot to tell them that. So it was a little bit of a communication issue there. And at the time uh, we realized the year, the members had already been asked to join and we have a great committee of, of people that I, I think are gonna be re very responsive to good, open, honest discussion. So does that answer your question, Ms. Klein? It does, thank you. And it allows me to support it. Okay, thank you. And Mrs. Madam. Buckley, I'm not real sure um, if Mr. Morrissey's suggestion is appropriate or makes a difference, I mean, we have it right in there. There would be a small committee of not less than eight to 12. I don't, individuals, I don't know that taking that out of there is, is necessary or appropriate. What's your thought? On the appropriate appropriateness of his amendment? Yeah. Um, it, the, uh, well, if we're going to do the amendment, we do need a second. But I mean, the amendment is germane. It, it is appropriate. It's just kind of further clarifying um, how the committee is to be structured. I mean, at this point, the committee is established. So I think really you just want your wording to best reflect what's been decided so that we have a record going back of how this committee is to operate. Okay, let's back up. For, oh, wait a second, Mr. Morrissey. Just hold on. Let's back up and get a second to the amendment. I, to the Ma amendment. Madam Chair, I haven't even made my amendment no, suggestion yet. I, 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 just, I just want to make a motion to amend what is in front of us by changing the first sentence in number one to read that the mayor shall establish a committee of individuals to determine how to change the police department insignia, period. But then that when never, you don't want the eight to 12 to even be in there? It's not necessary. The committee's already established. Can't be added to. But I think does not the amendment, Mrs. Falkley, need to reflect the makeup of the, the committee? I think that, I think that ultimately council needs to decide what parameters they want to put on the committee. If they want, so by Mr. Morrissey's amendment, um, it goes to say the mayor can establish a small committee of individuals. So what does a small committee of individuals look like? Well, right now we've already appointed certain members to serve on that small committee. If the council wants to say that a small committee is four people, then the council could do that. If a small committee is 20, then the council could do that. It's what the council wants the committee to look like. And I guess it would be my encouragement to get it to reflect the committee that's already been established and selected. Now, let me go back. Do we have a second on the, the three resolutions? Did we get a second on those? We have a second on all three resolutions, but if okay. we're going to talk about okay. an amendment, we need a second to that amendment. We've already yes. got Mr. Morrissey making the motion. Okay. Is there a second to Mr. Morrissey's amendment? With no second, I go on for roll call then. No. Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem. Sure. Sure. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem, Dave Boson. Yes. Since it died for lack of second, I would like to make an amendment to this resolution that says not less than eight and not more than 12 voting individuals and just insert the word voting as we have non-voting in there also and clean this whole thing up. Second. Second. 
Further discussion? Can you say that again? That we have a motion and a second on the amendment. Well, voting. Okay. Did I hear some side conversation there that I needed? We no. got it. We have a motion. We got it. Yep. Okay, we have a motion and a second on Mr. Boson's amendment. Roll call, please. Mrs. Jewin. Yes. Mr. Boson. Yes. Mr. Morrissey. Yes. Mrs. Klein. Yes. Mr. Foyce. Yes. And Mr. Greider. Yes. Okay, now we need a mo we need a roll call on the amended. Yep. So on uh, three, four, and five. Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Morrissey. Yes, in regard to number three, two, I um, have somewhat of an issue with the second sentence being committee members shall be balanced in their opinion on the issue. And then it goes on to talk about both at-large council members uh, shall serve. Well, I know as well as you do and the rest of the council knows that one of the council members, council at large, is against anything to do with the insignia while the other one was compromising back and forth. In order to be balanced, there needs to be a council member on there who wants that insignia totally removed. And I don't see that there. Therefore, how can you call it a balanced committee when you don't have that voice there on this committee? Mr. Morrissey, you're making an assumption on how I would have voted on that initial, and that's not appropriate. I would have voted to get rid of the insignia, and we know how Mr. Boson feels. So there is balance there. Any other comments? If not, roll call, please. Mr. Boson? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Foyce? Yes. Mr. Greider? Yes. And Mrs. Jewin? Yes. Would someone take six and seven, please? Madam Chair? <clears throat> yes, sir. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to adopt a resolution to consent and agree to the assignment and transfer of city con contracts to Ament and Inc. Uh, to Willett, with Ament Inc. to Willett Hoffman Inc who has purchased Amen Inc. and authorizing the mayor to execute said document. And seven is a resolution approving an amendment to the contract with Tyson Fresh Meats Incorporated of Waterloo, Iowa and the Iowa Economic Development Authority originally executed November 6, 2017 for a high quality jobs program tax credit component incentives to extend the project completion date and authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute said document. Second. Discussion. Roll call, Madam Chair, Mayor Pro Tem. Yeah, Mr. Brosen. Could could we just get a, a brief overview on six and seven? Yes. Is <clears throat> number six is Muhammad there or Sandy or Randy? Who oh. wants to take number six? I, I can do that. Okay, Bennett. Manager. Um, so what this is, is Amen Engineering is a firm that we have used um, uh, currently with three projects, and they're in the process of being purchased by Willett and Hoffman. Excuse me. Hold on just a second. Has somebody got something going on in the background? A thumping noise? Okay, it stopped. Go ahead, Mr. Bennett. I'm sorry. Let me start stopping. Now. Start. You want me to start back at the beginning? or? Yes, please. Okay. Um, so what this is, is Amen Engineering. Is yeah, it sounds like Randy's connection has got some weird um, feedback. It sounds like he's by a helicopter when he's talking. Randy, what have you got going on in the background? Randy? I'm not sure. I'll let it, if Sandy's on. I'll have her do it. Okay. Let's go to Sandy. I'm sorry. Hi, this is Sandy. Um, what this is, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, what this is, is Amit is a consulting firm that we have had numerous contracts with. Um, they are being bought 
by Willett Hoffman Incorporated. So what we're asking is just um, the agreements that we have with them that are signed at this time uh, be transferred over to Willett Hoffman and have the mayor sign that. So nothing has changed, it's just a change in ownership. Thank you. Other questions of Ms. Greco? Okay, Noel, would you take number seven? Sure, Noel Anderson, Community Planning Development Director. So essentially the Tyson was awarded. Uh, <laughs> I can't, there's a train on the roof up here with me. <laughs> um, Tyson was awarded a high quality job creation program through the state of Iowa program. Um, and so because of COVID, they are behind schedule on hiring people. They'll be hiring 245 new jobs. Um, the jobs will pay at least $17.52 per hour plus benefits. Um, the original project completion date was September 30th, 2020. They're switching that to May 31st, 2021. Um, so it's an eight month extension. And then there's a maintenance period of two years after that that will have the same um, extension given to there. Um, they are not located within a TIF district in the city of Waterloo. And so the local incentive to match the state program was actually the countywide um, industrial tax abatement program which will give them tax abatement at 75%, 60%, 45%, 30%, and then 15% over a five-year period. Other questions of Mr. Anderson? Uh, Madam Chair Pro Tem. Yes, Mr. Greider. It's not a question so much as a statement. Um, I'm not, number seven has left me at a quandary um, because on one hand I support high paying wages. It's what I ran on. I, I fully support that mission. On the other hand, um, we have had some concerns with Tyson earlier this year related to the pandemic. Um, I will be voting for number seven, but um, I don't want this to be read as, as a justification for behavior, but rather that the workers who work there deserve to be paid a living wage. Thank you. Other comments on six or seven? If not, roll call, please. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Foyce? Yes. Mr. Greider? Yes. Mrs. Jewin? Yes. And Mr. Bozen? Yes. Okay, thank you. Would someone take ordinance number eight, please? Mayor Pro Tem. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to receive, file, and consider and pass for the third time and adopt an ordinance codifying the City of Waterloo Traffic Code of Ordinances. Second. Discussion? Roll call, please. Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Foyce? Yes. Mr. Greider? Yes. Mrs. Jewin? Yes. Mr. Bozen? Yes. And Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Thank you. Would someone take ordinance number nine? Madam Chair. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to receive, file, consider, pass for the first time an ordinance amending the City of Waterloo Code, traffic code, by adding section 580C, no parking both sides, 5 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Wednesdays, when signs are erected in each block or portion thereof, giving notice, no person shall park a vehicle at any time on Wednesdays from 5 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. within the district and upon any of the streets or portions thereof as named herein, both sides of the 400 block of Janey Avenue. Second. Second. Okay. And is this a roll call? Any discussion? Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I'm just asking if Sandy could uh, uh, tell us about this and what her recommendation is. Okay, Mrs. Greco. Sure, hi, this is Sandy Greco, Traffic Operations Director. Um, I'm asking that you uh, vote this ordinance down. As Julie came in and spoke with the council, <clears throat> in front of the council and the mayor last week, objecting to this, um, I have spoke with her in the church also. And number 10 is a new ordinance that I'm asking that you pass this one um, because it, it, it takes no parking here to corner on Janie and it does not affect uh, Ms. Wentz's address at 405 Janie at all. So it's half of the block, not the whole block and everybody's in favor of this. 
So I'm asking um, that you just vote the vote number nine down. Okay. Other questions or comment? Okay, roll call, please. Mr. Foyce? No. Mr. Greider? No. Mrs. Jewin? No. Mr. Bozen? No. Mr. Morrissey? No. And Mrs. Klein? No. Okay. Would someone take number 10, please? Madam Chair? Yes, sir. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to receive, file, and consider and pass for the first time an ordinance amending the City of Waterloo Traffic Code by adding a new section 553B, no parking here to corner Wednesdays, both sides, 5 p.m. to 8.30 p.m., both sides of both sides of the 400 block of Janney Avenue. Second. Discussion? Comments? Okay, roll call, please. Mr. Greider? Yes. Mrs. Jewin? Yes. Mr. Bozen? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Yes. And Mr. Foyce? Yes. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. Second. Discussion? Is there a, a timeliness issue to this, Sandy? Um, they would just like to have it passed. So it's a safety issue for the kids um, with outdoor activities and stuff during church night between the parking lot and the church. Okay. Thank you. All in favor, say aye. We gotta do roll call. Uh, I'm sorry, Jewin. that needs to be roll call as well. Yep. Okay. Mrs. Jewin. I'm sorry. Yes. Mr. Bozen. Yes. Mr. Morrissey. Yes. Mrs. Klein. Yes. Mr. Foyce. Yes. And Mr. Greider. Yes. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to consider and pass for the second and third times and adopt said ordinance. Second. Discussion. Roll call, please. Mr. Bozen? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Foyce? Yes. Mr. Greider? Yes. And Mrs. Jewin? Yes. Thank Motion you. to adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you. Good night.